So you're thinking about getting a big electric unicycle. Well, there's a lot of things to consider before you do. So I just want to make sure that you know everything that you're getting yourself into to make sure you're making an educated decision. What do we mean by a big electric unicycle? We're talking something that is at least 100 pounds, which generally is in the realm of 22 inches and up. Uh, there's the EX30, which is uh, about 100 pounds, but it's only 20 inches. But we're going to consider that big just for the purposes of this because it really is a very heavy wheel. We're also talking the Master Pro, which is what I have here. It's the V1. We got the V13, the Monster Pro. Uh, and really, these things are absolutely massive. And so that's what really is the, the key point of discussion here. This is over 120 pounds. I have the metal battery boxes that I installed from Bigode, which added probably at least five pounds to it. I think we're roughly at 123 pounds. And something that, that is really important to know about this is how top heavy these large wheels can be. They do want to fall over very easily. So we're just going to go through the pros and cons, and that is con number one is top heaviness. Another con for these is the fact that they can be a little bit less maneuverable than some of the smaller wheels. You will be able to make tight turns very well with this, so don't get me wrong. You are able to maneuver with a very large wheel, but it takes a lot of practice. So I would say that it took me going from my 18-inch InMotion V11 to the 22-inch Master Pro I would say it probably took about 500 miles before I felt really, truly, truly comfortable on this wheel and being able to make very tight turns on it. Another con for large electric unicycles is their price. The price tag on these are, just seems like it's continuously going up and up and up, largely because of the cost of the motor, which uh, there's a lot of copper involved in there, the manufacturing costs for that and also the motherboard, which tends to be about $300 plus for one of these. And then also the big hitter, the batteries. The bigger your wheel, the bigger your batteries most likely. We're talking minimum 3,000 watt hours, which is what you see on the V13, all the way up to 4,800 watt hours on the Master Pro. It's, it's absolutely absurd how large these batteries are, but that's also one of its biggest pros. Let's move on to the pros. One of the biggest pros is the stability at speed. The bigger your wheel, the more stable it is going to be. So with that said, there's, there's going to be speed wobbles from time to time uh, with any wheel, but the bigger your wheel, the longer it takes to get into that wobble. And it's going to be a more powerful wobble, but it's going to be slower. The larger your wheel, the more stable you are going to be. So for that reason, the most stable wheel on the market, which is actually discontinued, is the Bigode Monster Pro. Secondly, now we have the 22-inch wheels, which will be the Master Pro and the V13. Those are going to be the most stable wheels at high speeds, or really at any speed, to be completely honest. The reason for that is the gyro effect. So the larger your wheel, the more it will want to stay upright at all times when you're moving quickly. So the gyro effect will actually be stronger the faster you go. Even though some wheels such as the Veteran Patton have a very high free spin speed and they are very capable of going high speeds, you will not and cannot achieve the stability that you can reach with the Master Pro or B13 with that level of safety. So you can go fast, yes. And with that smaller wheel, you will be able to accelerate faster, yes. But you'll never be able to go that fast as safely as you will on a larger wheel. So another pro for this, as we discussed just a minute ago, is the batteries. The batteries, while they may be heavy, they do add a ton of range to your wheel. You should expect to get a bare minimum 30 miles when you're riding like a maniac on a large wheel. Now, 30 miles is very, very, very low. And I'm talking about that only on the V13 when you're riding like a psychopath. 
uh, on my Master Pro, I I weigh 185 pounds and I'm 5'7", so I'm not that tall. And these wheels are really designed to be for people that are a bit larger, fully geared. I'm about 200 pounds on my Master Pro. Now, with that said, if I'm riding like a crazy person, I can probably go about 60 miles before hitting zero. Now, I can actually achieve about 40 miles of, of riding like a lunatic before I have to dial it down and I can't go faster than 40 miles per hour, which is still pretty fast on the Master Pro. 40 miles of riding like a lunatic, and then after that, with the battery state being lower, with these being 50E batteries, you're not going to be able to go as fast. But that said, you have a lot of range. If you're a lighter weight rider and you're, you're riding at normal speeds, say on the road, maybe 35 miles an hour max, you're going to be able to eke out up to 100 miles, especially if you're not accelerating hard. Finally, one of the biggest pros to these wheels is the performance factor. We're talking going 50 plus miles an hour. The Bigode Master Pro is able to go 55 miles an hour before cutting out. Now, we know that every EUC manufacturer in existence overestimates their speed by about 7 to 10% each. So in reality, while the screen on the Master Pro may say that it's going 62 miles an hour before cutting out, in reality, we all know that that's a lie. All the manufacturers do it. But we're talking, this is able to go 55 miles an hour. And uh, that's a huge, huge thing. The Master Pro is rated for 10,000 watts. So 10 kilowatts is what we're rated for. But I personally have been able to push over 15,000 watts on this, and I haven't cut out. The B13 is capable of pushing 10,000 watts without cutting out. And uh, it's a, another very fast accelerating wheel. They're outstanding, but you're able to really just launch. Something very important to consider with a large EUC is pad placement. It may feel and seem like you're not able to accelerate and decelerate as quickly as you are with smaller wheels, but in fact, it's all about leverage. I like to make sure that the rear pad is always touching the back of my calf, and so I can really just crank on the back of this really hard, and I'm able to decelerate very rapidly. Remember, with a large wheel, you are able to pull massive amounts of wattage safely. So you need to be able to dial into that. You don't need to have extremely long amounts of following distance, say if you're riding on the road, as long as you've been practicing your emergency stops. And I'm going to show you the benefits of having it really high up. It's going to be uh, pretty extreme to see. Pad placement is very important. So I prefer to have my rear pad as high up as possible. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with also getting an additional pad to keep it up against your heel. But you need to have that pad up as high as you possibly can. So when you're braking, your, your leg is just already going to be resting here when you're going forward. And then when you need to brake, your leg is already touching it and you're able to pull back on it very easily. Now, this creates a lot of leverage. When I'm going fast, I sit all the way back where my butt is like practically here on an emergency stop. It's effective and this wheel is capable of doing it. But something very important to remember is that you have to absolutely manhandle these wheels. There's no finesse involved in this. You have to absolutely manhandle it. You have to be mean with this wheel because it will respond very slowly if you try to finesse it and be too kind to it. So for me personally, that's uh, something that I like. I, it gives me a lot of skill that I, I didn't have beforehand. On the same note of manhandling it, I felt like when I first got this wheel that it was getting blown around too easily by the wind. But in reality, it's just the gyro effect wanting to keep this wheel up. And I was the one that was at fault. So when you're trying to steer it with a smaller wheel, you're able to steer it by just using your calves. However, it's so high up that you have to actually lean your whole body up against one side of the wheel and then let this side just kind of fall away and your body is going to be leaning over on here rather than over the wheel when you're trying to when you're trying to turn this way 
and vice versa. If you're trying to turn this way, then you're going to be leaning your whole body over here while keeping this foot on, but pushing your leg up against the, the side of this. That is the only way to drive a Master Pro in V13. Probably the same thing is the case for the EX30, but I haven't tried it. And same for the, the Sherman S, most likely.